Hey guys, James Sane here. So today what we're going to talk about is doing a bubble study. Now the point I want to make is when you do a bubble study, as a nurse you've probably been trained, you cannot inject any air into a patient's IV. Here we're purposely injecting one to two cc's of aerosolized saline into the IV. We do it on purpose. Wait, the patient's going to die. No, the patient's not going to die. It's very bad if you inject air into an artery and we're only injecting one or two cc's. Not one cc as an air bolus or two cc's as an air bolus. One or two cc's aerosolized saline. The point that we're trying to do is we're putting a bunch of bubbles into the right atrium and the right ventricle and seeing if any of those bubbles cross over to the left atrium or the left ventricle. We're looking for an ASD, atrial septal defect, or a VSD, ventricular septal defect. So yes, you're purposely going to put some bubbles, some air into the venous system. That your patient will be fine. When you do, I know nurses, you, you think uh, people are trained, you push medication in slowly. You have to push this in quickly. You have to push it in as fast as humanly possible. You, you can't push it in slow because then the bubbles are going very slowly and spread out over time and you can't see what you're trying to see on the transthoracic echo or the transesophageal echocardiogram. Let me show you what I mean. You have to have a functioning IV. The patient's typically going to be laying on their left side for the TE or the transthoracic echo. It's nice if you have an IV on the right side. The I, it will work on the left, it's just harder to get to. And ideally if you're working with the patient, there is no patient here, but you would be, um, you would have gloves on. Now, there's a number of different stopcocks. This doesn't have any covers on it when you take it off, so you have to keep that sterile, that sterile, that sterile, that's where Fluid will go through there, your eye will connect to your IV, or you will connect your syringes to here. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna, this is gonna be, I'm gonna let this become unsterile. And then you need two 10cc syringes. Again, I'm demonstrating, you need to keep the tip of that sterile. I'm gonna touch it and contaminate it. That has to remain sterile. I did have an Echotech have this all hooked up for me and they called me up the room to do a bubble study and they said here's your stuff and they set it on the bed okay well that just got contaminated got to start all over that can't be contaminated it's going to connect to an IV it's going to go into a patient's bloodstream okay so again you're keeping this sterile draw up some saline if this was a real patient, wipe it off with alcohol. Not, there's no patient laying here. This is just for demonstration purposes only. Get ballpark about 8 or 10 cc's. I want just a little more. Yes, typically in your real life nursing world, you would get all the air. I'm going to leave somewhere between 1 and 2 cc's of air. I'm going to connect this to one lure lock. This other syringe has nothing in it. It's nothing in it at all. This is gonna to connect to the patient's IV. So this would be disappearing into a patient's, you know, connected to their IV. And then I would get the port closest to the patient. So the way I do this, again, this would be connected sterile. Let me get a towel so I don't make a So I don't wanna make a mess. So we're just gonna put the end of this IV you can hold it over there. So, we're going to pretend that this is connected to a patient's IV. This is an off-handled stopcock, meaning whichever way this is pointing, this has the word off written on it. Some stopcocks are on-handled stopcocks, so you have to figure out. On this one, this is off to here. That means this is open and this is open. So what I'm going to do if this is connected to a patient, they, they, this one has a spinner on. Let's come up here just a little bit. There we go. So now I would be off to the patient. I just turned the stopcock. Now I'm, I'm off to this syringe. 
I'm off to the syringe. So what I want to do is turn this off to the patient. And when they say they're ready for me, I say agitating. I do this back and forth, back and forth. Let me show you this real quick. See all that aerosolized saline? That's what I'm going to inject into the patient quickly. I'm still off to the patient. When, it come, when I get to this point where I agitate, I'm right-handed. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Because I'm right-handed, I'm probably going to inject with my right hand. So I'm going to turn that stopcock off to this syringe and inject all this aerosolized saline in as fast as humanly possible. Some people will have you press on the stomach, kind of an old school thing to simulate coughing or a valsalva maneuver. When this aerosolize hit the bloodstream, this aerosolize saline hits the bloodstream, it is in the heart within a second. The blood flows that fast in the body. What you don't want to do is agitate, 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 and then inject a little bit, slowly. So, I would say, to the, whether I'm with the physician doing the TE, I would say, I'm agitating, I'm injecting. Bubbles are in. All right, and, uh, is this ventricle, is this ventricle? Um, no, that's the, that's the- Right atrium? Right atrium, cross it to Left the Left atrium? Mm -hmm. All right, so there, okay, there's some bubbles. Those are the bubbles right there, right? Yeah, okay. Is this the, um, those, is this the left atrium? I mean, is this the, so that's the right atrium? That's the right atrium. Left that's atrium. The septum, that's the left. And this is the? I don't know if that's actually just off axis. Okay. And that's how you do a bubble study. Um, you may be called upon when the nurse, when the echo tech is upstairs doing a transthoracic. Transthoracic means they're rubbing the wand on the chest. Hey, we need to do a bubble study and then you may be called upon to do that. So don't be afraid of injecting a small amount of air into a vein. It's not gonna hurt the patient and you have to inject it rapidly. You cannot do it slowly. All right guys, thanks a lot. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. It'll help my channel. If you found the information helpful or useful, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, remember to turn on notifications so that you don't miss when the next video comes out. All right guys, thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.